Thank you for joining us today. I'm Kay Hampton and I'm the Deputy Director of our office. Columbia Economic Development is a department of the City of Columbia. We have four major areas of focus in our office. Recruitment of both new business and talent, existing business expansion and retention, entrepreneurship and marketing communication. You can find out more about us on our website, choosecolumbiasc.com. Today's webinar will also be streaming live on our Facebook page at Cola SC ED. We are excited to have Nita Rutherford, who is an entrepreneur and small business owner in Columbia SC, and Tony Waller is the Director of Constituent Relations at Walmart. Our guests will take questions as time allows, and you can submit those in the chat box of the webinar. We will start with allowing our guests to tell us a little bit about themselves, their careers, and current positions, and they will continue with conversations on topics regarding building an authentic workplace and how to include diversity and inclusion into everyday values. Nada, Tony, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. I'm, I'm very honored to be here today. And same here. It is really an honor and a pleasure uh, to be uh, speaking with people from the beautiful city of Columbia, South Carolina, uh, and to be able to hang out with someone as super fabulous as Nada Rutherford, you know, my <laughs> life just can't get any better. <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 kind of glamorous some days, and some days not so much. <laughs> I feel you on that. I really, really do. Uh, you know, uh, you know, people laugh at me because uh, even at home, as I'm sequestered at home, I still get I get still get dressed up. You know, I still I put too. on a tie every day right and so and there, but there are days right now like mm, i can't do this today i slap on a hat <laughs> i slap a hat on top of my head and i said this is the best i can do for y'all i love it i just made a video yesterday on my instagram talking about the need to still get dressed um, because it's a part of self-love and self-care and we can get bogged down with the weight of the world especially in the climate that we are waking up to um, in these past 48, 72 hours. And um, I think it matters to show up for yourself and, and to uh, try to have a little bit of happy um, in sometimes a sad place. So thank you for being fabulous along with me. Oh, <laughs> and thank shucks. you, Kay, so much for joining us and for being here and having us. We, I really appreciate it. Hey, so Nada, I don't really know you. I mean, we've talked a couple of times, but tell, yeah. tell me about you. What should I know about you? <laughs> you should know that I'm the hardest working woman you'll ever meet. That's number one. <laughs> Agreed. Number two, um, you should know that um, my heart is in service and in the community and whatever I can do um, in my life that allows me to serve others, um, it will always be my number one focus and my number one goal. Um, I just so happen to do it quite stylishly. <laughs> Um, so when people ask me, you know, who are you? What do you do? I tell them I'm a servant first. Um, and then I'm a mom, I'm a wife, um, and I'm a community advocate. Those are, those are how, those are the titles that I would use to describe myself. Um, but what I do for work, which is often what people want to know, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I'm also a nurse practitioner. I've been in healthcare for 14 years and I have that skill set and that background. I work in that area every day, but my passion is service and I love fashion. I've always loved fashion, even though I grew up poor and in foster care and I didn't really have new clothes until I became an adult. And so now I try to show uh, individuals that you can be stylish and fabulous and show up for yourself in the best way possible but you don't have to spend lots of money that you can do it using secondhand clothing items, um, gently used items, and you can still look amazing. So that's I, me in a nutshell. I <laughs> am so right there with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, like you, like you, I love clothes. I love, you know, looking good. Uh, it makes me feel good. It helps me mm -hmm. mentally be, be on, you know, just mentally be on. Uh, and like you, I truly believe that. Uh, so uh, a little bit about myself, so I can kind of get into this, a little bit about myself. Uh, I was born and raised in, my name is Tony Waller again. My, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Uh, my family, however, is from Virginia, from a little town called Danville, which is in the southern part of the state. 
My father was mm -hmm. in construction, ended up going to Puerto Rico for a year and it ended up turning into 22 years. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's, that's how that goes. But moved back to Danville uh, when I was 15, uh, uh, went to college, uh, uh, started working for uh, State Farm, worked for them for a, for a long time, for about 22 years. Uh, and then left State Farm after a great time there, never thinking that I would ever make a drastic change like I did. But I left State Farm after 22 successful years and went to work for Walmart. And wow. I've been with Walmart for 13 years, almost 14. It'll be 14 years in, um, in, uh, in December. Now, y'all, I, I started real young. Okay, so let's get that part straight. I ain't old. I was gonna say, you're only 22, Tony. How have you done Thank all these you. things? <laughs> Thank you, that's right, I'm only 22. But you know, the thing, um, you know, like you said, uh, you know, that's kind of what I do in my daytime, but my nighttime job, my other job, I have two. One is I, uh, I shop for people. So I have a whole group of clients that I oh, shop okay. for, do all of their shopping. Um, and the range of people that I work with are individuals who have, you know, disposable income. They can, they can mm -hmm. buy what they want. But I have clients who say, Tony, all I have is this amount. Yes. And those are the ones that I love working with the most because unfortunately society has made it seem as if in order to look good and be your best, you have to spend a whole lot of money, which yes. you and I know that is a lie. That yes, is it truly is. a lie. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I first started out, I didn't have any money to do the things I wanted to do. You know, I went to secondhand stores. I went to, at the time, I went to Kmart and JC Penney's and Sears and, uh, you know, you know, all these, you know, as some people would term lower end stores, I disagree with that, but you know, that, that people don't tend to, uh, connect with from a fashion standpoint and created all things and it's it's always it always kills me when I and makes me laugh actually when people say like oh my goodness that looks good where did you get that oh I bought that tie at Kmart or Walmart <laughs> or I bought that shirt at you know, I found this shirt at a at a thrift store for seven dollars um, right it's unbelievable what you can do and then my other job is like you I'm all about uh service my mother taught me years ago uh before she passed away that we all have an assignment in this world. And do not confuse your assignment with what it is that you do. Yes. Your job, your family, your friends, your ups, your downs, everything in your life is a tool that you are to use to carry out your assignment. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very clear on what my assignment is. Um, and so I make sure that all that I do is focused on helping me to accomplish that assignment because I know that at the end of the day, I only have a few, I have a limited amount of time on this earth that I need to get things done. And so um, that's a little bit about me in a nutshell. <laughs> I love it. Well, we have so much in common, Tony, as, as we kind of found out when we had our previous conversations. Um, so tell me how tell me how you're feeling about um, there's this push right now, and it, there's a push for equality. Um, it's a battle we've been fighting for a long time, but you work in a corporation. You work for a big corporation, and I'm sure that there have been lots of um, kind of coffee coffee room talk about how to increase diversity in the workplace and how to build that and what that looks like and what that feels like um, without seeming like it's just like, let's hire black people, right? Um, it's a very real conversation that needs to be had because oftentimes uh, people that look like you and I are not represented at the highest level in corporations. So talk to me a little bit about the work that you do with um, Walmart and how you're helping them create um, an environment that is more inclusive. You know, it's interesting that you uh, that you asked that question, and it's a great question. Um, uh, fortunately, I, I don't know if it's fortunate or not, but you know, we've been having these conversations for quite some time, pre-COVID, pre, -COVID, pre um, uh, uh, everything that's been going on in the world, uh, on what it is that we need to do better. And our CEO, I give him mad credit. Uh, has mm -hmm. been really been paying attention. Doug uh, has been out for a long time talking about 
uh, the inequities that we see in the world. And um, he recently just came back, prior, prior to all this, he, he just he came back from Montgomery uh, at, uh, and went to visit the new um, uh, 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 Social Justice Museum uh, that's, that's down there. And uh, it really rocked his world. I mean, to mm -hmm. see uh, historically how inequity has, has, has led up to where we are today. Uh, it led him to, to be part of an institute, institute called the Racial Equity Institute. And mm -hmm. based out of Greenport, North Carolina, amazing organization. But what the institute does, it traces the history of, 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 of slavery and racism from the beginning, from 1619 all the way up to today. And it shows us all of the systems that have been put in place that started back in 1619. Now their purpose is not about trying to change your mind on anything, but their purpose is to show the evidence that racism had, has been, is, is a system that was created that has been used and reused and reused and all these new levels have been laid on top of it to create to where we have today, which is why it's being manifested in the way that it is today. Mm -hmm. And so with that, it really caused him uh, to call, it really has caused him to step up and lead and understand that we as corporations have to play a role. Um, there was a time I would tell you that he, as many CEOs would say, we are just blank, you know, in other words, he would say, we're Walmart, we're just a retailer. I mean, we're just supposed to sell stuff. It's not, it's not for us to, you know, AT&T, we are just about phones. You know, it's not about to, you know, it's not about us getting involved in this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. right? To now where you're seeing corporations stepping up and saying, oh my goodness, we have to do something, right? Uh, and the expectation is there because consumers are expecting that. I don't know if you've seen, um, uh, there is a, a report called the Trust Barometer. Uh, that comes out every year. Edelman Public Relations, the largest public, public relations firm in the country, does this, and they literally test and test the trust in communities every single year. And in fact, they just did one solely focused on racial equity. And mm. the interesting thing came out of that. What came out of it was that straight up, people just don't trust. They don't trust government. They don't trust communities. They don't trust anybody. And their height of expectation now has increased. So now it's not government or nonprofits do the work. Corporations, you need to step up and do your part as well. And it's being well, reflected. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, Tony, that there's been a history um, in in the medical field, you know, I, I'm a healthcare mm. provider in the medical field in government, you know, we have this systemic problem and we know we can't fight all of it, right? Like we know that we cannot fight all the battles. Like Tony Waller can fight the battle that he can fight. And maybe that um, starting a youth group, youth group in Danville um, to help, you know, disenfranchise youth. Maybe it's, you know, like style by NADA, we provide clothing to the homeless and maybe being able to provide them with business clothes yeah. to be able to go and interview for a job helps break that cycle for them of poverty right. that helps get them in the, in the right direction. So I think our society with so many things that have been brought forth, the, um, the videoing of, um, of racial injustice and social unrest has allowed us a, a lens into has allowed, I guess, not as black people necessarily, but has allowed other non-blacks to have a lens into what it feels like to have your life endangered yeah. by the people, by the, by the very people who are supposed to protect you. So yes. I think it's a, um, it's a very interesting dynamic that we have. Um, and I know we can't, like, we're not the corporation, but I think that we are the consumers of these corporations and they are in business because of us. And we know that these businesses are placed into areas where people need it the most. Walmart is not setting itself up um, down the street from millionaires. Walmart is setting itself up near lower 
uh, socioeconomic developed areas because they are the ones that need those types of bulk and cost savings. Right. So um, we have to we have to acknowledge that the corporations are making money off of the people um, who are being threatened. And we have to also acknowledge that those corporations do have social responsibility um, to give back to the communities that support them and put, you know, put that B in the billions that they make from those communities. So um, I'd like to kind of switch the conversation if I can, Tony, to, to have, to have us talk about on a, on a micro level from, from Walmart, um, what are some things that Walmart is doing at a local level, at a community level, um, that gives people hope and, and allows people to see representation um, from Walmart? So you, you are spot on. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a believer that you have to control what you can control right? The problems out here are so big and sometimes it gets overwhelming to the point that you say, well, you throw your hands up and say, I can't do anything, which is not true. You can control what you can control. And so uh, to your point, uh, we've been doing a lot of work around a number of areas. Uh, as an example, uh, in, the, in the area of hunger uh, and, uh, you know, and food, uh, we work with our local food banks to make sure that food is mm -hmm. available for those who are in need. Right now, and especially during the time of COVID, we are seeing more and more people who are going without. And so we've increased our giving to food banks all around the country uh, to make mm -hmm. sure that there's access to food. Uh, we've hired additional people. We've already hired over half a million additional workers because we know that people have been displaced. Uh, you know, businesses uh, have closed or they've laid off. And so what we've done is, uh, is, is found opportunities uh, to bring people on board in our stores and our distribution centers uh, to help out. And what I'm, I'm loving what's happened with this is that we've seen a lot of innovation as well, because there was a time that it would probably take about 24 days, if you will, to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. We can now get somebody hired in 24 hours. You can go in wow. today and tomorrow have a job. And so, so, uh, so I'm, I'm proud of that innovation, but there's still much more that has to be done, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We still have um, uh, schools who are in need. We still have uh, people who are worried whether they or not they can pay their rent. We still got who are worried, can they get their prescription? Uh, you know, and so we are looking at how can we play a role uh, in uh, how we can play a role in, in that uh, in that way as well. One of the things that we did talking about rent, as you know, in many of our stores, we've got storefronts, right? So we've got small businesses that are located within our stores. Mm -hmm. Well, we forgave rent because we knew that they were going to have a hard time. If they, you know, they could be open because of, of, of different, you know, rules, regulations, in many cases, mm -hmm. you know, government said, you know, right now you shouldn't be open. Uh, you know, people weren't able to make money, you know, right. and had to make adjustments to how to restructure their physical buildings, right, or the physical entity to be able to serve customers. We understood that that was going to be hard. So we made provisions to let them know that we're supporting you and we're helping you out. Uh, one of the things that uh, we're also looking at uh, right now is um, uh, uh, working with nonprofits, local nonprofits in communities that are serving the customer, they're serving people who have been impacted by COVID on a lot of different levels, whether it's mm -hmm. I need food, whether I need other types of assistance. So we're working with, you know, with, with local urban league affiliates, we're working with NAACP branches, we're working with the uh, National Black Child Development Institute affiliates. We're working with school systems. We're working with smaller nonprofits who are looking for, uh, you know, for looking for supplies and trying to mm -hmm. help them as best that uh, best that we can. Um, thus far, just on COVID alone, with COVID-related efforts alone, we've we, we con con contributed over thirty million dollars, um, wow. and uh, that's that's over and above the close to $1 billion that we contribute in the world uh, uh, you know, annually uh, because we know it's needed and we continue to look for those kind of opportunities. The other thing that we've, we've, been, we've been very clear on is making sure that we do the best that we can for our associates. 
because they're out here working really, really hard, right, uh, right. which is one of the reasons why we cut our hours. Now we're not open 24 hours. Why? Because we've got to give our associates a break. We've got to give them an opportunity to rest up and be ready and take care of the needs that they need to take care of, right? right. To restock our shelves, to make sure that they're available for the customer. Uh, and to make sure that they can take care of their own families and make sure that they're okay, right? right? Um, and so that's the reason why we've shut those hours down so they'd be able to do that. But it's also, we found opportunities to, you know, to show our appreciation, you know, by giving them, you know, a number of bonuses. Uh, they've gotten three bonuses thus far. And a lot of people, uh, in addition to their annual quarterly bonus, a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. don't know that we bonus our associates every quarter. If your store is a profitable store, you are eligible for a bonus. And that's whether you are part-time or full-time, whether you are a store greeter or a store manager, everybody's entitled to that. But we've also made additional bonuses, three of them, in fact. Uh, it's, 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 come over, it's come to a total of over $1.1 billion that we've given to associates to help them out because we know that they're going through some stressful times just as the rest of the world is. And probably in, in many cases, even more stressful as they're trying to serve the customers that we, that we want to serve at the same time as taking care of their own needs. So um, those efforts continue. We've, uh, we, we were the first company, we were the first company to remove the crime related questions of our, our application because we've been very focused on how can we play a role in hiring people who've been previously incarcerated. If you paid the price, you should be redeemed and given a second opportunity. And one of the things that we realized is that unfortunately, society doesn't allow for that. So in 2010, we made the decision to take those questions off and we've been working very hard and finding ways to proactively you know, hire people who've been previously incarcerated, who, who, who are able, who want to work, who want to make a change and who deserve to have the opportunity for a second chance. So, I mean, I know you're tired of hearing from me, so let me shut up. No, 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 you're question. fine. Uh, no, no, you're you're absolutely fine. Um, you brought up some really interesting things. I was taking notes as you were talking. Um, you know, the fact that Walmart has been able to assist local food banks, to assist local nonprofits. Um, I hope that Kay will um, take the time to put in the chat where local nonprofits could um, possibly access and gain more information about that because there are lots of nonprofits doing work that may need assistance. Um, so right. thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, I think sometimes we look at Walmart, you know, this multi-billion dollar company and we think, you know, they don't understand what's going on at a local level, um, at that micro level, as I like to say. And so it's really nice to hear that they're doing um, local things, that they're helping their associates. Um, and to talk about the fact that the criminal um, records are, are, yes, we have to look at those things, but to give someone a second chance, um, I work in a prison system here in South Carolina. And I know that sometimes people go to jail and it's for something really small. It, I mean, something that that really any of us, you know, if you pay, if you don't pay a speeding ticket, you can have a warrant put out for your arrest. Right, right. Does that make that person a bad person? No, it just means that maybe they had a heavy foot one day and they forgot to pay it. Um, and, and so it's really nice to know that Walmart is making strides in the community in that way. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. I'd like to talk a little bit about, um, thank you so much, Kay, to put up the Walmart Foundation and where people can go to find that information. Let's talk about how, mm -hmm. how we actually bring in people, because we know that at the associate level, we probably have lots of representation of black and brown and, and non-white um, people that work in those roles. Let's talk about the actual how though, like for me as a small business owner, um, I look, I recruit from USC and I recruit from Benedict College. Those are two schools that I have a relationship with. One is predominantly white and one is an right. HBCU. I'm a proud graduate of Benedict College and HBCU. Um, and I know that there are lots of talented people there that often are overlooked because large companies or even small businesses don't think to tap into that, uh, that pool of uh, potential workers. And so for me, I put out information um, at both of those schools, one has, um, for USC, we use a portal system there. Mm -hmm. And for the students at Benedict, I contact the administration to see, hey, do you have any students in need of jobs? Um, 
as a local business, I've been able to help start a career closet there at Benedict College so that students who are in need of clothing, whether it be business or casual clothing, so that they can go there and get free clothing items. But that's just such a small part, right? So how do we how do we include more people, more diverse people in the workforce? Because it's not just about race, right? It's not just about black, white, Hispanic, Indian, Asian. It's, it's not about those things. It's also about our veterans. It's also about the members of our LGBTQ community. It's also about having people who have different perspectives and different voices and different experiences so that they can bring those to leadership roles. Tell me how you feel Walmart is doing on a, at a at an executive level, um, are they increasing in recruitment efforts for people in those higher level positions? Because I often find, Tony, it's not at the base no. level where there is yeah. or where there's a lack of representation. It's often at the top level. And what is what do you feel Walmart is doing to recruit people from its communities that it serves to operate at, at those higher executive levels? So you are spot you are spot on, uh, Naida. Uh, the fact that um, uh, that we uh, we could do a better job. I, I will say this: Walmart is doing a, a very good job. It can do better, right? And mm -hmm. I would say to you, I would agree with you. In the lower funds of the com of, of of companies, people do really well. In entry level, they do well. But where we where we where corporations, and that includes Walmart, needs mm -hmm. to do better at is how do we create a pipeline that prepares people to move folks up? In our case, I will tell you, and I'll be very frank, we are doing really good on the top and we're doing really good, you know, kind of in, in the bottom, but it's in the middle that we could, we could do some more improvement. Okay. You know, as an example, uh, Dakota Smith, he is the chief operating officer of Walmart. A black man, mm -hmm. um, Latrice Watkins. She is the EVP of consumable. In other words, she oversees all buying of anything that is not food. Black mm -hmm. woman, Spelman grad, killing it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who else? Kelvin Buncombe is the president and CEO of Neighborhood Market. So you know the small neighborhood, the smaller format stores mm -hmm, that are primarily mm -hmm. grocery, the EVP over all of that, black male. Okay. Uh, and the list goes on and on. I mean, we've got tons of, of, of great, you know, uh, of great, uh, you know, African-American officers mm -hmm. within the company who are doing tremendous work. Carla okay. Harris, I don't know if you know Carla Harris, who's vice chair of, uh, of, uh, of not JP Morgan Chase, um, Morgan Stanley mm -hmm. uh, on the board of directors at, at Walmart. Prior to all of them, uh, 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 Ross Brewer, who now is COO of Starbucks, was the CEO of Sam's Club, which I mean, a lot of people don't realize that Sam's Club is also part of Walmart. So mm -hmm. we, we've been mm -hmm. very good in that realm and we're doing really good. I'm very proud of the work that we're doing there and we're continuing to add more and more African-American officers to the company uh, and that's because of the leadership and direction of Doug McMillan, who says, we're going to make this thing happen, right? But to okay. your point, well, well that, how do we But that's really good people? to hear. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, how do we prepare people, to your point, right, to be ready to compete with those, for those jobs when right. Latrice decides I'm going to take another opportunity, when Dakota says, I'm retiring, when mm -hmm. Kelvin says, you know, oh, I want to move over to international, right? Who are we preparing to get lifted up there? And so uh, yes. it happens on two on two ways. One is in the recruitment, okay. right? So we have an amazing uh, executive recruiting team who is directed by all of our uh, you know key associates to say this is what I want. Who are saying mm -hmm. to people, don't present to me a pool of candidates that's not diverse for me to interview. Who are mm. saying, uh, you know, who are saying then in turn. What are we doing now to make sure that we're preparing people to compete? Because we've got a lot of good people working at Walmart, right? Right. So how do we start identifying that talent? And it's on us too. You know, so one of the things that, that I learned was I can't expect others 
to do what I should be doing too, which means being on the lookout of good, solid talent and making powers that be aware of that talent and mm. saying to them, you need to take a look at this person. Uh, you need to watch out for this person. How do we create a developmental opportunity for that person that will showcase his or her talents and get them into, into the eyes of the right people? We've all got to do that. So it can't all be on recruiting. It's got to be on us as associates, and we have to expect that. And so that's mm -hmm. one of the things that we're working on. I have a small informal group uh, of, of directors and senior directors that meet uh, every month. And one of the th things that we talk about is looking at who have we seen out there that looks really good? Who is doing great stuff? And then, okay, so who are, wh what are we going to do to get that person into the front of the, into the, into the eyes of the right people so they can be viewed? It's those kinds of things that have to happen. And then the other thing that has to take place that we're, 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 I'm very proud of where we're headed here is making sure that we're developing programs specifically to identify and prepare diverse associates, and in this case, black associates, to be ready to compete. So we've been working with our executive talent development department to focus on, okay, I know that y'all are looking at these high potential people. How mm -hmm. do we start identifying people who are high potential who are black and other, but who are mm -hmm. black? And how do we now in turn prepare them, start preparing them intentionally for opportunities? Because the other thing I always see is that we talk about it, right? Oh yeah, we right. Do it, but we don't get intentional about it. Until you like really do something, you know, talking about it ain't gonna do squat. Tony, so I was about to call you out. I was about to call you out, brother. I was about to say, listen, companies are, especially corporations, are excellent at talking about, oh, we're implementing a diversity program or we're yeah. increasing our, our recruitment efforts to include more diversity. But yeah. I want to see it. I want to see proof. And so when I, when I hear companies um, say, whether they are a small business or whether they're a large corporation, when they say to me, hey, we're increasing our, increasing our diversity, um, in our recruitment how show me show right. me what you're doing and and then when you get those people in what are you doing to develop your people right. so what so one of the things that happens at style by Nate and, and again I speak from a small business standpoint is my employees are paid well my top employees um they they make a certain amount yeah. Um, and then, uh, but our, at our base level, you're making $10 an hour. And a lot of times these are college students. Let me tell you, if I was a, when I was in college, I would have killed for a job where I could have made $10 an hour. Minimum wage is $7 and 25 cents. And so we're already bringing our people in and showing them respect for their time and their talents by valuing that with a, with a right. dollar amount. And then like our director of operations makes a little bit more than that because we're preparing leaders. So when That's you come right. to work at Style by Nada, you are being prepared for leadership. So I don't treat them as if they are just, you know, working for me. I tell them all the time, I work for you. You tell me what you want to see. So we hire them as independent contractors so that they can say, so we have a, a young lady that's, that is majoring in visual merchandising. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't provide you those tools. That's in you. So you have to bring your, ta your talents to our store. Right. And so one of the main parts of her role there is to do the visual merchandising for the store. The store has never looked better. We love having her on. We have a, uh, and she's a USC student. We have a former a SCAD student, a SCAD graduate who does our um, marketing. We have a student that is majoring in retail management. So she helps to run the operations of the store. So when you come to work for, for my small business, you are doing what you would do in a in a real position on the outside. We give them that real world experience. And when they get stuck right. or if there's an employee issue, I say to them, how would you fix it? If you had to fire or hire someone, how would you fix it? Because I feel as if a lot of times, um, and even in large corporations, there is no thought um, placed into what will actually prepare them for leadership. Right. Well, you can't prepare for any role unless you learn to practice in that role. So I force them to use their leadership skills. And then I pinpoint, I like to see where they are naturally. 
some people are natural leaders and some people need development. So for the young lady who is the director of operations, she's a natural leader. When everything mm -hmm. started to fall apart with coronavirus and all of that, um, and she happens to be a young, uh, she's a white female, um, but then our marketing director is a black female. We have a model and store associate who's a black female. We have um, another young lady who um, she was from, I want to say her family's from Nigeria. I may be messing that up. I'm so sorry, Ngozi, I love you. Um, I just can't remember off the top of my head right now. But so we try to have a diverse workforce so that yeah, when yeah. shoppers come into the store, there's representation, there's um, a mix there. But also we try to give them diverse experiences that actually prepare them for leadership so that when they walk into a Walmart as an associate or a store manager or one of those mid-level exec roles, they have been in leadership. They know what it's like to fire someone. They know what it's like to hire. They know what it's like to lead daily meetings and weekly meetings and to plan to do retail management and resource management. Right, so, right. so Walmart is, from what I hear you say to me, Tony, you're saying that Walmart it could improve in their development of those mid-level executives, but they are also putting in place programs, actual programs with objectives and goals to foster and facilitate leadership in at that entry level to build them up. Is that what you're saying to me, Tony? Because that makes me very happy. Well, that is exactly what I'm saying to you. And in fact, uh, you know, one of the areas where we've done an amazing job, I'm so proud of, is in our internship program. You're talking about bringing people in. Our internship program is, um, you know, I would I would say probably one of the best internship programs in the country, because we give our interns real world challenges to solve, and it is amazing to see the brilliance of these young folk and what they come up with. And these are programs that start actually end up implementing. I mean, so I uh, the, the the last interns just uh, uh, and uh, I had the opportunity to meet a young man, Southern University grad, or getting ready to graduate from Southern University, who was given a project to focus on how do we make, uh, in Sam's Club, how do we take some of our, um, uh, what's the right word, the uh, 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 surrounding programs that we work with, like uh, Voodoo, uh, Pandora, uh, you know, all of these agreements, all of these kind of uh, merchandising agreements that we have with organizations, and how mm -hmm. do we make them better? Because of the fact that while we have them, are the members really using them, right? So is it because there's something else that's better out there, or they don't know about it, or a combination? Mm -hmm. What is it? And what he put together was out of this world, so much so that he's been offered job already so he's already secured a position at uh, sam's club um uh before he even gets out of school so he's going back to school for the rest of Love this it. year and next year he'll be working you know he'll be working for us right um so those are the kinds of things that and to your point so often what happens is like we do these these programs right but we don't put no meat behind them right we don't put mm -hmm. any real you know, real, uh, to your point, exactly what you talk about of really giving them experiences that really set them up to be able to, you know, to, 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 to be successful when they start hitting the real world. And so those are the kinds of things that we have to continue doing. We have to continue walking, walking that talk. Um, our, uh, our Black African American Associate Resource Group has a program that they put together for uh, for uh, for the entry level folks, again, to prepare them for opportunities. So it's about number one, truly educating them on who we are as a business and mm -hmm. how to understand the business. So not just about our philosophy and why, why we do what we do, but understanding what does it mean to market at Walmart? What does it mm. mean to, to understand a balance sheet at Walmart? What does it mean right. when you're talking about profit and loss? What does it mean mm -hmm. when we're talking about supply chain and bringing things in? Giving them those basics so that they understand what the business is all about mm -hmm. and prepare them. And also to show them what other options they are, right? Because mm. the, the other thing that we learned was that oftentimes people don't think 
people always think that, you know, when they think of Walmart, they just think of a store. And I get it. You know, that's what most people see. They see a store and cashiers and stockers and store managers, but they don't see the architects. They don't see the real estate agents. They don't see uh, all the, all the uh, computer and tech people that we hire. They don't see all the logistics experts. Mm. Or, they don't even see the weathermen. Do you know that we have our own <laughs> weather station? We have, a, we have people right now. I've, gotten, I, I've already gotten reports on what's going on with Hurricane Laura and how they have wow. rerouted trucks to make sure that they're able to get to the stores that they need to get to, right? Mm. How they're looking at that. I mean, people, that, those are the kind of stuff that we do in-house. We don't hire anybody else to do that. We do that ourselves. So these are jobs that people often don't understand, that we realize that we hire. We have our own DJs. People don't, people don't realize that we have our own radio station, that we have our own DJs that we hire. <laughs> I mean, we have our own television wow. station. We got television technicians, producers, directors, you know, who work for us as well, who do our own commercials, who do every, you know, so these are the kinds of things that time people don't understand. We have that we have to mm -hmm. expose people to. Now, to your point, this is where we have the biggest challenge is how do we make sure that we trickle this information down to the field? One of the things that right. we have really learned really well right now in these past few months is that all the time, our own associates in the field don't know what's available, don't know, understand. And so big concentration of the work right now is making sure that people fully under, fully know this stuff. There's a mm -hmm. gentleman by the name of, of uh, Keith Waichi. Keith is uh, one of our vice presidents overseeing what we call our education um, uh, shared value work. They're the ones, that, that's one pillar in this, in this race towards social equity that we're focusing on of how do we uh, do better from an education and workforce development standpoint. He's looking at that and he's identified that as one of the things that we do and how do we do it in a way that we keep people informed? How do we do it in a way that we actually help people create their own um, uh, workforce, workforce plan? Like, you know, if you know be X, how do we get you there? How do we intentionally get mm -hmm. you there? And we've got people out there who are very versed, who are very well versed at developing, and they know how to do that kind of stuff. But I would say not everybody does. So now we got to get everybody ramped up so that all of our associates have those kinds of opportunities. So, you know, you're, you're spot, you are spot on. You're, now, let me ask you something. Yes, come on, you, I'm ready. You, you, you as a small business owner, as a, as a, I'm not going to call you that because I already can tell you, you're a conglomerate. Okay. Oh, yes. So let's call you. <laughs> let's call you. Let's be real. You a bad sister. Well, thank uh, you. You know what are the challenges that you have seen as a as a as an entrepreneur now, given all of the issues and challenges that we are seeing in the world, and how have you? What have, what are the steps that you have taken to kind of adjust, readjust, kind of make change? to keep this thing going? Because I know it's, it cannot be easy. It is, it is not easy. And I'll tell you this, there are lots of businesses that won't make it out of this pandemic, that won't make it out of the social unrest and the social injustice that we're dealing with. There are lots of um, non-Black businesses that will suffer because people will, will maybe not patronize them. Um, maybe they have a Confederate flag hanging in their restaurant and they didn't realize that, that people noticed. Um, and so there are lots of businesses that will be affected by this. And I'll tell you that our business, our business has been um, affected and, I, and I'll share with you that I'm a part owner of a restaurant in Northeast Columbia, a soul food restaurant. And while my Style by Nada business has, you know, decreased significantly, um, we put measures in place that allowed us to operate online. And being a thrift store online is very difficult because you, you don't have 20 mm -hmm. of one product or like Walmart, you know, thousands of one product and you just have that one picture we have to take a picture and measurements and 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 find models and do all of that for one item and so that whole process for one item and it's been a challenge but we have um satchel and kit and tasia um and gozi olivia um who have worked with me throughout the pandemic who have been i mean just amazing, amazing talent that they brought to us. Um, 
but I'll tell you, it's been hard. Now at my restaurant, at the restaurant that I co-owned um, with Raquel Thomas, um, the pandemic was the best thing that happened to it. The social injustice and arrest was the best thing that could have happened to it. Um, restaurant business is hard and it was struggling. Um, and we had all this food. And like I said, service is the main driver behind most of the things that I do, probably all the things that I do, honestly. And I said, we should offer $5 meals to the community. And she said, what a great idea. We have all this produce, all this, all this meat, all these things that we can offer. And there are lots of families who were struggling and there were people who maybe weren't struggling and they were able to donate meals. We donated, um, we had people, uh, organizations um, that donated money so that the nurses at the hospital could eat. We had people who um, who donated masks. Um, I know personally, I wrote the bus system to give out masks to people. And so we tried to find different ways to um, market and use the business that we have to support the community. And we're small, we don't have a lot of money, um, but it was very helpful for our restaurant business, for people to know what we were doing. And for the Style by Nada side, um, we encouraged people during the pandemic because we operate off of donations, clothing donations, purge your closet, use this quarantine time to purge, um, leave it on your porch, we'll come by and pick it up. It will be a contactless uh, delivery and drop off. And so we were able to do that. And now we have beautiful products that we can offer people for $5 and $10. Um, we have a diverse workforce. Um, and so we're able to, we're, we were able to pivot and adjust accordingly. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of businesses that don't understand how to do that. And, um, and so during this time, I've tried as a small business owner, as the, as the future conglomerate that I will be, um, to offer people uh, advice and lessons that I've learned along this way. That's and great. I find that when you are doing things for the community that help the community, people are more likely to support your business. But you can't just talk about it. You have to actually do it. So one of our um, mantras for this year was do more, talk less. And so we showed people what we were doing versus talking and making beautiful pictures and posts about it. Here is what we're doing. Yes, there's a pandemic going on, but we are riding the bus and giving out masks. Yes, there's a pandemic going on, but we are offering free clothing to the homeless who don't have access to showers and things, but at least they can have on fresh clothes. Uh, we're offering uh, non-perishable food items that they can take with them as snacks because a lot of the restaurants aren't doing the outreach that they were once doing because they are limited in their resources. So we are doing the work as a, as a small business to support our community. Um, but you shared about Walmart having um, a Walmart foundation. I never knew about that. So don't worry, you'll see. I'm sure there are lots of people <laughs> requesting help from Walmart, but we're going to throw our names in the hat too. So this is such a great conversation because what it does is allow um, people to have a face to go with Walmart that yeah. looks like them. Yeah. And that speaking to what we are actually going through, that really does matter. Um, and I think even for, for my business with the restaurant Gold Den and with Style by Nada, um, we're using this time to rebrand. We're using this time to make improvements. So Style by Nada will actually become the now and then store so that we can focus more on bringing in local small businesses that don't have the capital to have a storefront, that don't have to rely on going to flea markets during this time. We have an audience of 10.7 thousand people that we can reach for them. So it may not be a lot to people who have a million followers, but for our local community, it could mean, you know, putting money into a single mom's pocket or helping her stay in school with her side business. So those are the ways that as a small business, I feel like we're helping. Um, and it's really nice to know that Walmart is supporting people like me who, who may need that support during this time. You know, uh, you, you said something that brought, uh, brought, to, uh, brought to memory uh, of something, one of my favorite quotes. There's a quote by St. Augustine that says, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's exactly what you're doing. So, you know, yes. you keep on preaching the gospel, girl. Keep on <laughs> preaching. You gotta uh, meet you people know, and, where and, they are. <laughs> that's right. 
and you're spot on. I mean, you know, we've got to, you know, we've got to find those kind of ways to support people who ordinarily, you know, don't have the their their normal channels, if you will, of of being able uh, to 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 sell their products, right? One of the mm-hmm. things that we've been having a conversation on, a big conversation on uh, at Walmart is how can we do more around uh, making, uh, making it easier or making it uh, better for small businesses uh, to be able uh, to share their products uh, you know, mm-hmm. and services to others through Walmart. And one way we've done it uh, uh, is, is by creating what we call a, uh, a marketplace on, on walmart.com so that individuals who may not be able to, let's say, you know, put something in a store can still be able to put their product on walmart.com and wow. sell it that way online, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, 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 and oftentimes that's how many businesses begin, right? They start something online, then they, they're able to ramp up enough uh, mm-hmm. wrap up enough resource to be able to put, you know, to put products in our stores. Uh, the other way, um, uh, one of the things I always tell people, uh, if you Google uh, uh, doing business with Walmart or, do, or, or if you go to corporate.walmart.com slash suppliers, it provides all of the information on how in- individuals who want to become suppliers for Walmart, how they can do it. And I would suggest people and encourage people, look, we're always looking for good, pro, you know, good for, for product uh, and opportunities. But I also say to people, make sure that you are ready. And you, and Nada, you talked about that, right? You mm-hmm. talked about being ready when I had to switch over when COVID hit. Often yes. what we find is that folks aren't ready. So this way, you know, be ready, but the, the, the site will, will give you really great information on what we're looking for, how we look at things, what you should be considering, what are the questions that we're going to ask you so that you have the answer for them, because mm-hmm. that'll be a, a, a big help. Uh, so I suggest people to look at that, and it'll show you also all the different ways, right, to come in. Because mm. oftentimes, the other thing people will say, like, well, you know, I can't, you know, we have 5,500 stores in this country, right? Well, I can't supply 5,500 stores. I get that. Not everybody can, right? Right. But can you supply 10? Can yes. you supply, you know, 100, right? Mm-hmm. So the site will kind of talk about that as well, right? So how do you go about that kind of thing too? Um, and so uh, so we have to continue looking for those ways of making that happen. And, and as I, I talked, as I spoke with you, uh, you know, about uh, looking at, you know, the, the stores that are, the, 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 the uh, entrepreneurs who are inside of our Walmart stores, the other piece that that Doug McMillan, our CEO, has said is that we have to watch out for all the small businesses that are around our stores, right? Because mm-hmm. we are part of that community, and so what role should we be playing, uh, you know, in helping in helping uh, the recovery uh, when the right time comes that we can kind of get out and do something to see that recovery? Uh, Doug McMillan is the uh, chair. Not only is he our CEO, but he's the chair of the Business Roundtable, which is composed of the CEOs of the top 200 countries, 200 companies in the country. And he has made it very clear uh, as chairman that he says, you know, it does, it, it serves us, it does not serve us well, right? If, uh, if, if, if we aren't doing something to help small business, mm-hmm. that, that the, the economy needs small business. We, it is not good business Despite what people think that, you know, like if, if we have it all, having it all is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Economically speaking, it does mm-hmm. not work. You know, we, you know, you see there's there's plenty of documentation that says that and Doug recognizes that, that we, in order for this economy to do what it's supposed to do, to be as successful as it mm-hmm. as it can be, it must include small business. It must yes. include entrepreneurship and innovation. And we have to play a role in, in, in being a support to that. So you're, you're spot on. And I'm proud of you. I, I love Thank how you. you're being innovative and doing what you're doing to serve, uh, you know, to serve those that you're trying to, that, that you're trying to help. And not just, people, not just people and consumers, but other fellow small business people. So let, yes. me, ask you one, let me ask you one other thing. Uh, what's your advice to me? What 
what what is your advice to me as I continue down this journey? What do you think and what are you are charging me and what are you encouraging me to do? I am so glad you asked this question because I was going to offer it whether it was solicited or not. Oh Lord, um, oh my goodness, have I, I opened up myself to something? No, I, I, just, I, I charge you. <laughs> I charge you to I charge you to look out into the communities where the Walmart stores are to look for those small businesses and maybe develop a program that helps a small business become eventually big business. I charge you to to create informational commercials that let people know about all of the components of Walmart mm -hmm. and that there are internships available and have programs that are direct pipelines to HBCUs and to, and to all female schools that, that offer a way for people who are often overlooked or lost in the big pool, a way to directly bring in people from a diverse background because you know we talk a lot about race but there's also gender inequality yeah. in positions of leadership um, and, it, and at executive levels um, I've been in a position of leadership I mean the only female and the only person of color in the in the room um, and it's very disheartening to not have people that have your same experience and that that experience um, microaggression the way that you do from from their peers and so I charge you Tony Waller today to commit to me um, that you guys will look at small business, but you will also look at a direct pipeline into HBCUs and into um, the community and to look for programs that, um, that encourage people of color and that encourage women um, to, that encourage people of the LGBTQ community to join forces with Walmart to create a community that really does serve everyone and not just a few. You got it. I got you. As I love a, it. As, as, a, as a gay Black Puerto Rican, <laughs> I got you, girl. I'm right there with you. So I, 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 I thank you for that. And, and here's my charge to you. Yes, I'm, I was uh, just about to say, what advice do you have to me? Keep on uh, being being vocal. Keep on speaking out for those who cannot speak. Make me accountable. I want you to watch me. I want you to Google me. And I want you to say, yo, Tony Wall. I will. <laughs> I ain't seen you doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right? Because we need to, we mm -hmm. need to prop each other up, encourage us each other, uh, and keep yes. us all accountable. So I got my charge mm -hmm. uh, and I loved everything that you presented. I absolutely loved it. But um, I want you to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I promise you that I will keep in touch with you and that if I feel like you're not, I will let you. But I will also praise you when you are because a lot of times we critique things, but we don't often for those small battles. We know there are lots of small yeah. battles to get to the big war, right? And so I, I promise you to support you in your endeavors with Walmart and in the community. Um, and, I, and I appreciate all that you're doing. And Maybe. Kay, thank you so much for having this forum. This was well, amazing. I, I was I was gonna say, Kay, now I'm trying to put Nada on the on the I ain't trying to put Nada on the oh. spot. But can we do this again? I mean, I think that there's yeah. so much more that we could be talking about. Uh Nita, you Absolutely. are just fabulous and brilliant. <laughs> thank and you. so are you. There's so many other questions that I would have loved to have asked you. Uh, <laughs> and so and so I, I ain't trying to put anybody on the spot, but Kay, if, if there ever comes an opportunity that we could do this again, I, I would love I would love it because I think there's just a lot. Uh, I, there's a lot that I can learn from Nada um, and that I hope that others can. And I'm hoping that people can learn a little something from us. And, you know, there's just all these other topics of conversation that we never even got to. Yes, That's right. let's do it. I'm here. There's a lot more we can talk about. And I appreciate both of you so much. Our whole office does. It's been a wonderful opportunity for us to get to know you a little bit better. You're both full of life and you know, great community leaders and servants and really great role models for everyone. I think we've gotten a lot of cool tips and tricks on both ends of the spectrum from corporate to the small business today. And that's what our office does. That's what we're about. And we are proud to know people like you and have you in our community and thankful. 
And I thank everybody for attending today. Um, again, if you have questions for us in our office, we're always available for you. Our website is choosecolumbiasc.com um, and we're happy to help, we're there for you. Thank, thank you guys yeah. so much. Thank you all so much. And I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> yes, I think we should. I think we should talk talk a little bit about um, how society props up celebrities and doesn't necessarily talk about leadership and how you can have success without necessarily being a, a celebrity. So that was a question that was asked in the chat. So Kay, I'm putting it on your shoulders um, <laughs> so that we can we'll maybe see. have a discussion about that. <laughs> we will. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah.